In this video we're going to extend the HTMX based drop down that we built in a previous video and we're going to add a third level of dependency to that drop down. In other words, when a user selects an option that will determine the options available in the second list and then when they select another option from that second list it will determine the options in a third list. Now this particular thing has been requested multiple times so let's get started. In VS Code I have a directory open and that directory doesn't contain any code. What we're going to do is we're going to clone the code from a previous video that is on GitHub. So make sure you copy the URL for this repository which I'll link below the video and then in the terminal we can run the git clone command and we can clone that particular repository to our local directory. Once we've cloned that what we're going to do is we're going to actually check out the branch called final in this repository that contains the final code from that previous video. So let's go back to VS code and we're going to cd into the directory that we just cloned and then we can run the git checkout command with the dash b flag and we'll check out this new branch called final so run that command and that will switch to that new branch and it'll also create it as well once we've done that we can run git pull origin and then the name of the branch which is final and that will pull those changes into this directory so now within this folder we have the code that we had at the end of that previous video and now we can extend that code so i've activated a virtual environment that has django installed what we're now going to do is run python manage.py migrate and that is going to create the database and the migrations from that previous project once we've done that, what happened in that previous video, if you haven't watched it, we had a management command called load data. And what that did is it loaded a bunch of courses and modules into the database. And each course was comprised of multiple modules. So there was a relationship between those two entities. Now to load that data into our database, we can run python manage.py and then the load data custom management command. That's going to load them into the database. And now what we're going to do is view that previous project project in our browser and we're going to remind ourselves how that worked. So let's run the run server command and we can open the browser and we can see how this works. Now we have two select boxes here and the first one contains the courses and the second one is empty when the page first loads. Now what happens to the second one is that when we select an option from this first list of courses that's then going to trigger an htmx request to the back end and it will populate this second drop down with the modules for that course. So for mathematics we have linear algebra and so on. If we change that to computer science, we then get modules such as machine learning. So that changes depending on what you select here. Now the goal for this video is to add another drop down to the mix so that when we select a module, that's going to trigger another HTMX request to the back end and it will load the tutors in this case for that particular module. So we're going to need to create a new model called tutor. That's going to be the first step in this process. And when we build this, what we're going to end up with is a three level chained drop down where the first drop down determines the options for the second drop down and then the second drop down will determine the options for the final drop down so let's get started and go to our models.py file and we're going to define a new model here called tutor which will inherit from django's model class so the idea here is that a tutor is responsible for delivering a module in this university so what we're going to do is give the tutor a name so we're going to copy the name field from the module and that's simply going to be a car field that will store the the name of that tutor and the second thing we're going to do is link a tutor to the module so let's imagine that in this university a tutor can only teach one module so we're going to link it with this foreign key so we'll use the models dot foreign key and that will be a foreign key to the module class and when we delete that module let's cascade the delete and give this a related name in this case of tutors once you've added that class you can stop the server and we're going to run python manage.py make migrations and that will add the migration file for this new model and then we can run the migrate command to actually add that table to our database. So we now have a new table called tutor in the database. Now we need to add data to that table. So what I'm going to do is we're actually going to create a new management command for this task and that's going to be called load tutors.py and to start with let's copy this boilerplate code from the other command into our new command and we can change the help text here and we'll just say that that's going to load the tutors. Now we're not going to need the course model in this particular command so let's replace that. We're going to need the tutor and module models and that's because we're creating tutors 
filters. So obviously we need that model, but we're also going to link them to modules. So we need to import that as well. So I'm going to add a comment at the top of the handle function. And what we want to do is for each module in the database, we want to add three tutors to each module. So let's start a for loop here. And we're going to say for module in module.objects.all. And for each one of those modules, we can create another for loop. And let's say for i in range three. And what we now want to do is we want to create the tutor and link it to the module. Now, if we look at the models.py file, we can see that the tutor has a name. What I'm going to do is install a library that will allow us to generate fake names. And that library is called Faker. So in the terminal, we can run pip install Faker. And when that command completes, you then have access to Faker in the environment. So let's run Python on the command line. And what I'm going to do is just show you how Faker works very quickly. We can do an import here from Faker. We can import the Faker class. And then we can create an object which we'll just call Faker as well by instantiating that Faker class. Now, Faker allows you to generate realistic data. So for example, we can print out Faker.name. .name is a function on this Faker object. And that will give you back a somewhat randomly generated name. And every time you run the command, you'll get a new name back. So you're generating realistic fake data. And this doesn't just work with the name. For example, you can get an email address back and that will give you a realistic email address. And there's all sorts of things you can do with Faker. If you're interested, I can make a video on that later on. For now, let's exit the terminal and we're going to add the code to create the tutor here on line 12. Let's say tutor.objects.create. And to the create function, we're going to pass a name that's going to be equal to the faker.name call that we just seen in the terminal. And of course, in order to use Faker, we need to import that at the top. And then we'll instantiate the Faker object here within the handle function. And as well as the name, the tutor also has a module attached to that model. So we need to link that form key here. All we need to do there is specify the module keyword argument and link it to the module that we are looping over on this for loop on line 12. So that's all for that command. What we can then do is run python manage.py load tutors and that will then load these tutors three for each module to the database. So we now have these tutors in the database and each tutor is tied to a module. If we go back to the browser for our application, the goal here now is that when we select a module, we want it to load the correct set of tutors. So let's get started building that with Django and HTMX. We have here in this directory, the core application, a templates folder, and that has the university.html template. And if we look at this template, you can see that we're including a partial for the modules. And that modules partial is what's returned by HTMX when we select a course. So for example, if we change the course to physics, that will send a request to the back end. We will filter the modules based on only those that are tied to physics. And HTMX will return the list of physics modules to be swapped into the DOM. We want to do something very similar with the tutors. So what we're going to do now is create a new partial and we're going to call that tutors.html. And we can copy the code from the modules.html partial into this tutors.html partial. And we'll change some of these references to tutors rather than modules. And in the for loop, it's going to be for tutor and tutors. And the option value will make that the tutor's primary key and will render the tutor's name in the field. Let's now include this new partial in our main template. So I'm going to copy this code here and we'll paste a div here and change the ID to tutors and we'll include the correct name of that partial here as well. Now that we've done that, what we're going to do is go to views.py and we're going to add a view that's going to fetch the correct set of tutors based on the module that has been selected. So let's create a new view called tutors and we're going to extract the module that's been sent to the backend by HTML and we can use the request.get. That attribute will return a dictionary and then we can get from that dictionary the module that's been selected. And what we then need to do is get all the tutors that are attached to that module. So we can run tutor.objects.filter and then we can filter down to those whose module is equal to the module that we've extracted from the get request HTMX has sent. And of course, we do need to import the tutor model at the top of this file, so we'll do that. Once we've got the tutors here, we can then add them to a context dictionary. And then all we need to do is return the partial that has the tutors code here. And that partial, remember, will loop over each tutor in the context and it will render out an option for each one of these. Now, it turns out I've added this code to the wrong file, so I'm going to copy it into the correct file, which is tutors.html, and we can delete this copy that I've created. And the next thing we need to do is add a URL that's going to call that view. So to our URL patterns, let's add a new path here, and that path will link to the view that we've just created. Now, let's run the run server command here, and we're going to go to the page and see how that looks at the moment. If we go to 
our page and refresh, we now have this new select box below the modules. What we're going to do is add some margin here. So let's go back to university.html and we're using bootstrap here. So I'm going to add a class of MY4 and that's going to add some margin to the Y axis of this particular page here. Let's refresh and now you see we get some separation between the two selects. So if we select a course, for example, physics, we get the modules dependent on that course. Let's now select astronomy. And the problem is nothing happens to the tutors and that's because we haven't actually used HTMX yet to call the back end when a module is selected. That's the next step. So let's go back to VS Code. We're going to go to the modules.html and in this partial we want to actually use HTMX to call the back end when we select a new module. So we're going to add these attributes to the select element here. Let's go to that now. And first of all, we're going to add a name here. So let's give it a name of module. And that corresponds to what we're extracting in the view. If we go back to the views.py file, we're looking for a parameter called module in the get request. So we need to add that name here to the select option when we select a new module. The next thing we're going to do is add an hx get attribute and we'll use Django's URL template tag and we're going to call the new URL called tutors. Now we're going to add an hx trigger here to this select. Actually by default it is the change event but we're going to explicitly add that here. What that means is when the select changes, it's going to trigger this hx get request to the back end. And the final thing we need here is a target. So the returned HTML will be swapped into the DOM at this target. And it's going to be the element with the ID of tutors. And this corresponds to what we have in the parent template here. We have this div with the ID of tutors and that by default includes the partial. What we want to do on an HTMX request, which filters to the correct set of tutors, is we want to replace what's here by default. So we specify that this is the target. So with that, let's go back to the page and we can refresh. Let's select a course, let's say mathematics, and then we can select topology as the module. If we look at the tutors, we now see we have three different names for tutors here. So it appears to be working. Let's try changing the module from topology to number theory. When we select the tutors, you can see that we have a different set of tutors here below. And again, when we change the module, let's say to physics, and select optics here. We again have a different set of tutors. So this is working. Each of these tutors is tied to the module and the filtering is working correctly. So let's select a particular tutor here, Jared Ross. If we change the module, you can see that that's blanked out and it replaces that with a new set of tutors. Let's again select someone, say Julie Roberts here. There is one problem. If we select a new course, for example, film studies, it blanks out the modules, but it doesn't do so with the tutors. What we want to do is blank out both of these selects when the top level select, which is the courses, changes. Now, whenever the course changes, we're guaranteed to be changing the set of tutors. So what we're going to do is use an out of band swap. When we change the course here, we're going to add some HTML that will swap out of band to also handle this case at the bottom. So let's go back to VS Code. And what we want to do is when we change the course, we want to also do an out of band swap that adds the partial for the tutors into the DOM. So let's copy this code for the tutors partial and we're going to paste that into the modules.html. This is the partial returned when you select a course and you want to filter the modules down. We're going to paste that at the top level of this modules partial. And because it's an out of band swap, we're also going to add the HX swap out of band attribute and we'll set that to true. Let's save that and go back to our page and we're going to see a new problem here. We have two select boxes for the tutors and that's because when the page first loads, what happens in the university.html file is that we include this partial for the tutors, but we're also including the modules partial and that now has its own include for the tutors. What we need to do is only include this tutors partial when it's an HTMX generated response. Now there's an easy way to do this. If we go to views.py and we go to our modules function, which is responsible for returning that partial, we're going to add a new bit of context here and that's going to have a key name of is HTMX. And we're going to set that to true. So when we return this partial with the modules.html, we're going to have a key called is HTMX that's set to true. And we can go to that partial now and we can use a template if statement to include only this code if HTMX is responsible. And don't forget to end the if statement at the bottom of that code. So this will no longer be included when the page first loads because it's not an HTMX generated request. Let's save that and go back to the page. As you can see, when we refresh, we now have only one select box for the tutors. Let's test this out and select computer science and web development. 
And now we have tutors such as Tony Hendricks. Let's select him and we'll change the name of the course to Mathematics. And you can see that that adjusts both of the select boxes below. And if we select the module differential equations and then we have the new set of tutors. So this is all working now. We have three select boxes where the first one determines the set of options for the second one and the second choice determines the set of options for the third choice. One final thing that you can do here if you're using Django HTMX, the package, that adds an attribute called .htmx to the request object. So you can change this if statement to simply if request .htmx HTMX, and that will then work if you're using Django HTMX. You no longer need this piece of context in this function here. But if you're not using Django HTMX, this will work perfectly fine. You have a bit of context that tells the template whether or not this is an HTMX request and therefore whether or not to include this partial as an out of band swap. So that's all for this video. Thank you for watching. If you're interested in more HTMX content, let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next video.